All right. Hello, everyone. Cha uniki sak na tasu islia wana ni nahanagansik. Hello, my name is Leah, and I am from the Narragansett Indian Tribe. I'm the Community Engagement Specialist at the Half and Refer Museum of Anthropology at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. I know we have a lot of people joining us from all different time zones. And I would like to say, Kunipiam, welcome everyone. This is our first virtual workshop um, and our first virtual event. And so I need you to bear with us a little bit as we are learning the ins and outs of how to conduct a virtual workshop. But we hope that all of this goes smoothly. Um, so this event is sponsored by the Friends of the Half and Refer Museum and we would like to thank them very much. And so we're just going to move forward and I just want to let everyone know that this is being recorded. And if you do not want your, um, if you do not want your, your face or if you do not want to be recorded, we're just going to ask you to turn off your video. And you can do that by going in the, scrolling over the lower left-hand corner of your screen and clicking stop video. Uh, we'll get to a little bit of housekeeping, but I just want everybody to take a look at the rest of our virtual programming for the semester. And it's all in October. We have the Women Do Archaeology series. It will be Thursdays from 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. And it is the Women Do Archaeology series with some wonderful colleagues of mine. Uh, we have Annalisa Hepner, Dr. Pinar Durgan, Dr. Michelle Smith, Dr. Jem Thumb, and then at the end of the month you can come back and see me working to do a cooking demonstration in traditional clay vessels from this area. So if you need more information you can just go to brown.edu slash go slash HMA events. And if you sign up for our Half and Refer Headlines newsletter, you will get all updated information in your email every month. So we just want to let you know that this event is being recorded. Um, please note this virtual event, including attendees Zoom video, audio, screen name, and questions or chats will be recorded. All portions of the event recording may be shared through Brown University's digital channels. Individuals who do not want their identities to be captured are solely responsible for turning off their camera, muting their microphone, and or adjusting their screen name accordingly. By attending this event, you consent to your name, voice, and or image being recorded and to Brown University reproducing, distributing, and otherwise displaying the recording within its sole discretion. Um, so the benefit of having this recorded is for all of those who could not join. We had over 120 participants sign up. Um, and for those of us, or for those of the folks that signed up but could not come, uh, they can watch it at a later point. And you can also share this video with your family and friends. It will be posted to our YouTube page um, at Brown University. So just a couple of general housekeeping questions um, and answers. If, if you have any questions regarding your corn husk figure or any information around corn husk dolls and figures, uh, we would like you to use the raise hand function, and this allows for uh, active engagement between you and I. And so the way you're going to do that is you are going to move your mouse to the bottom of your screen, and there is going to be a button that says participants. And then you will click that button and you will go over to the right hand side of your screen, and next to your name there will be a little blue hand, and that is the raise hand button. And so when you click that, our tech administrators will see that your hand is raised and when the time allows, they will unmute you and you will be able to talk to me um, directly. And so just so you know, when this function happens, if you've not used Zoom before, uh, your question and your audio and or video, if you choose, will go before everyone who is present in this virtual room. Um, if you have any technical questions about using Zoom, I would appreciate if you could 
speak with tech help, which is Emily, um, and this will be through the chat. So you can scroll over to the chat button or the chat feature, and you can choose from the drop down menu to chat Emily uh, with tech help. Um, I am not going to be able to monitor uh, the chat, so we really do appreciate it if you could use the raise hand button. Um, this is a great reminder for right now, um, you should have your corn husks and you should be soaking them in warm to hot water. If you have not done this, please go do it now. Um, I'll allow for a few minutes for everyone to kind of get ready, get their corn husks and materials ready. Um, some other materials that you may want to have on hand include towels or paper towels. Also some yarn to make your hair. A pair of scissors and also some sinew or dental floss or cotton cordage and also a lighter is very helpful if you are using sinew or artificial sinew. And we just wanted to share some participant best practices. Um, and so for those of you who have not used Zoom before, these are just some practices that we like to exercise in communicating through this virtual world. Uh, so be fully present, listen deeply, respond thoughtfully. Um, we would appreciate if you could respect the opinion of others using appropriate language. Um, if possible, turn on your video to increase opportunities so I can see your beautiful face um, and you can see mine and it's the best we can do for a little bit of human connection right now and mute your audio when you're not speaking. We have you all muted, but when you wish to raise your hand, we'll be able to unmute you. This is just to kind of keep out any background noise. And try to be patient with our tech crew. Like I said, this is our first virtual program. So, um, you know, there might be a little snafus here and there, but we're working really hard. And we'll have time for more questions at the end of the program. And most importantly, have fun with this. Um, this is meant to be enjoyable, something for you to share with your families, with your colleagues, with your friends, with your community. And so this is a skill that um, I think is great to have. It's fall, happy fall to everyone, Winita Kwonk, happy fall. Um, and this couldn't be a better activity for the first full, full day of fall, I think. And like with all of our programs that we do at the Haffenreffer Museum, we wish to do a land acknowledgement. And this land acknowledgement is said and stated at the beginning of each event that we have, but we are working very hard at the museum to not just have a general land, land acknowledgement, but to actually have community connection and working with the indigenous communities of the land that we are seated upon. Um, that is part of my response, my personal responsibility. Um, and so the Hafen Refer Museum acknowledges that Brown University currently resides on the traditional homelands of the Narragansett and Wampanoag people who have stewarded this land through the generations. We recognize and respect their, our enduring relationships to this place in the past, present, and the future. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see me and I'm going to take a look and just scroll through. I see some familiar faces here. Welcome, welcome. Hello everyone, Kanipiam. Welcome. Um, I'm very happy to see all of you and speak with all of you here. Um, I just wanted to really say thank you all for signing up for this and participating in it. It's very exciting and I look forward to more workshops. And so uh, for those of you who might just be joining us, uh, we, I just want to let you know again, we are recording this. So if you don't want to be recorded, just turn off your, your video and also um, Soak your corn husks in warm to hot water. Um, my corn husks have been soaking uh, for quite a while now. The water's still hot. Um, 10 minutes is usually the minimum. 
And so while we're soaking our corn husks, I'm going to show you, we're gonna go over to our top down video so you can see. Um, and this will be the video that will be pinned. So everyone can follow along and see what we're doing. So these are the corn husks that I tend to buy. I buy all different brands. I like to go to local bodegas um, and Latin American food stores and groceries to get these. Um, but you can also use traditional corn. You can use the corn you buy in the grocery store and just dry them out. I like these because they're already dried. Um, it's one less thing kind of that uh, we have to do. We do have here, um, so I picked this traditional corn last week. This is our Narragansett white cap flint. Um, this was a corn that me and some of my community members and sisters grew together. And so we have it braided here. This is our flower corn that we use. Um, this is just a simple braid. I can't lift up the huge braid here onto the table, but um, we use these corn husks in making our corn husk figures as well. Um, but namely because I like to braid my corn to store it for the winter. Today we're using these store-bought ones. So you may notice when you do take them out of the bag that they have a smell, it's a vinegar smell. They soak them in vinegar to kind of get any of the bugs out. Um, be warned, I have found little deceased critters in my corn husk. So don't be surprised if you see it, um, but they may be there. Uh, but you may have that slight vinegar smell. Um, it will dissipate over time, especially with the soaking. So we'll just put these right in our water. But these are the corn husks that you can get to make tamales, um, which are absolutely delicious. And because it's dinner time here on the East Coast and I'm working with these, it's making me think of having tamales for dinner. Some other materials that I said before, scissors. Um, a lighter is important if you're working with sinew, artificial sinew. Some people signed up for kits. This is what you have. This is imitation sinew. Um, truly, it's just kind of like dental floss, but what it is meant to, uh, what it is meant to re represent, I guess, is um, real sinew, which is made out of deer tendons. So traditionally, our ancestors would take the tendon of deer, or you could use moose, or if you have buffalo in, in your area, um, then you would take the tendon, which connects the bone to the tissue, we all, or the bone to the muscle. We all have tendons right here. That's what allows you to do this. Um, you would take it, dry it out, pound it, and then it's going to separate into fine strands. Um, this is very commercially, uh, easily commercially available. And what is neat about this stuff is it splits rather easily. So when you work, you can work with a, a half um, thickness. Uh, some go quarter thickness, but I tend to kind of like to go with the half. And we also have some yarn. Um, I have black yarn. I have, uh, I use gray yarn. I've used yellow. I've used red. Um, I mean, you can use any kind of purple, uh, any kind of color. You can use purple, um, but this is for the hair. And so um, the finer the yarn, sometimes the better um, because it's a little easier to spread around, but thick or fluffy yarn is really, adds a really interesting detail to your corn husk, really interesting textures. Um, people all around the world have different textures. If you want to represent your family or your children um, in your corn husks, maybe try to find something that might be similar to the texture and coloration of your hair. Um, this is my favorite corn husk doll. This is my old man, um, my grandpa here. Uh, and so I made him a few years ago. Um, I still have yet to finish him. I have to finish the beading. I was beading a little corn design here. I have to do the other side. Um, but he has nice gray hair. He's got uh, an apron here, a little finger woven belt. Um, and we also have some other dolls. This was the doll that I 
most recently completed um, for the cool time lapse video that we did. And so these figures are what we're going to be making today. You're going to be making one figure with me. Um, so it can either have legs or not have legs. Um, so you can see the bottom, the difference in the bottoms here. And I'll show you how to do both of those things. So the very first thing that we are going to do is we are going to measure out our hair. So we're going to start unraveling and I'm just going to take a little bit of this yarn, I'm going to put it in my arm and I'm just going to wrap it around my elbow. And we're going to go around about 20, 25 times for those of you who are winding this yourselves those of you who received the kits in the mail, um, this has already been done for you. Um, you don't need to untie it, it's already tied um, for you. So I'm, honestly I've lost a little bit of count, but I kind of do it by feel. You can see here on my arm, this is what I have. A little limited in space here, so it's a little awkward to do it right in front of the camera. You don't want to go too thick because it's going to be too thick within your doll and then it's going to be difficult to braid. And if you go too thin, your doll is going to have some bare patches. All right. And then you're just going to cut it a little bit longer with a little extra there. And you have this nice loop. So then what I do is I just put it down and I take a little bit and I trim it. And then I just find the area where it's going to, where my loose ends will hang down a little bit and just go opposite of that. And I'm just going to tie it around with a little knot. And you have your hair. Don't worry about the loops on the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me, we will be addressing those later. At this point, does anyone have any questions? If so, please use the raise hand function. You just move down, click participants, and you can raise your hands. And we will unmute you. So now I've set a towel down just to um, protect my wooden table here. This was my kitchen table growing up. It was my, it was my mother's, now it's mine. It's my, my art table. So it's nice to, to have that connection. And let me move my corn husks over. Um, Leah, we have a question. Yes. Um, I'm going to ask Michael uh, Nephew to unmute and ask your question. Great. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I was uh, busy winding the, the yarn so I didn't see how you tied it. Oh, sure. Um, so what I did was I just took a little bit extra um, of the yarn you can take from your yarn here, right? Take about this much and then you, I'll just retie it. You just go under oops, and you just tie a knot through the loops. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you. I love this raise hand function. So you can see my corn husks here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and we're just going to try to find ones that are nice and smooth. Um, I'm not going to choose this one because it has a split in the center. Um, when you need to choose the size of your corn husks, the very uh, easy thing and very easy thing to do is just split them, just pull them right apart. But I'm going to choose two fairly nice corn husks. You want them to be flat. Some of the corn husks you have 
might actually be kind of wavy. And we can use these um, on the inner part of the doll or um, maybe on the skirt um, or the pants section. But this part of the corn husk, we want to be smooth because this is what's going to become the face. So go through, and just find a nice smooth section. All right, and then find another one. So you want two. So I'm going to split this here. So this is a good width. And I have another section here. I'm going to try to match up the width just by tearing. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your hair and where you tied it off on the knot, you're going to put it down just like that. And you're going to just put your other corn husk right on top. So it's a nice little sandwich. Now you're going to take some of your other corn husks and you're probably going to go, you're, you're going to take about three, two to three, and layer them right on top. And then you're going to take this. So now I have three on top of my yarn. One, two, three. And you're going to flip it over and you're going to add another two or three. And I say two or three because some of them, some corn husks can be a lot thicker. So I'm squeezing out the excess water here because you don't want water all over your lap in your table. And it's okay if these aren't the prettiest. You can see that they, these ones have some marking. That's fine. They, they definitely serve their function because they're the inner parts. So I have one, two, we'll go three. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take somewhat thin ones like this and you're going to go on the side. So take, lift up the side here, put a little bit underneath and fold it over so it's like a sandwich. So you're closing up the sides. And we're getting ready to make our first knot. You just fold it up just like that. Are there any questions so far? So what I'm doing now is I'm taking my sinew or if you have a cloth tie, I'm gonna move my water out of the way. Um, Leah, I'm gonna jump in. We have another raised hand. All right. Um, Felicia, uh, Ryan, then your last name is cut off, but I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Felicia. Hi, could you go a little bit slower, please? Absolutely. Thank you. So we just have our four corn husks on top of the yarn, or excuse me, three corn husks on top of the yarn, three underneath, and one on each side. So I'll use this opportunity. Um, I first learned how to make corn husks when Oh boy, I was probably 11 or 12. My mom showed me um, fairly simple ones that kids can make. Um, I have, this is the style I initially made. Um, you can see it's very easy. This is what sometimes a lot of kids might make in school. Little braided arms, very simple. 
Um, and I kind of expanded on that as I got older. Um, my first job was at the Mashantucket Pequot Museum and Research Center in Connecticut. It's the largest native museum in the world. And I learned how to make corn husk dolls that were a little more, um, I should say, uh, structured. So something like this, but he's still pretty simple. Um, and then one day I attended a workshop with a tribal uh, relative of mine, Dawn Spears, who's Narragansett, and she taught me how to make more elaborate ones. And so I still have the cornhouse doll that I made in her workshop when I was about probably 18. Um, and so the style that we're making today uh, is pretty similar to what Dawn makes. Um, and so she's a master corn husk doll artist. Um, so she's Narragansett, I believe she's also Tuscarora as well. So huge katapatash to Dawn for being uh, a leader and a teacher in, um, in carrying on this tradition of corn husk doll making. Um, Leah, we have another question. Go for it. All right, so uh, Beatrice Taylor, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Beatrice. Hi, um, how many uh, husks do you put on the side? Oh, I just put one on each side. Oh, okay. Yeah, real simple, just one on each side. It's just to kind of close it in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> So what we're going to do here is we are now going to take some of our sinew or our cord and I'm going to um, go with a length that's just a little bit longer from my middle finger to a little bit beyond my elbow. That feels about right to me. And I'm just going to cut it. And what I'm going to do is lift up this bundle of corn husks and yarn that I have. And I'm going to take my sinew and put it one third of the way up my corn husk. So if you look at the video here, this is where it is in relation to the rest of the corn husk. And then I'm just going to cross it over and I'm going to pull it tight. And you might want to wrap the sinew around your fingers a little bit. So pulling it tight. Cut some of the cloth here. And just flip it over and double knot. You can even, you can even if you want to make it a little tighter, because this is what's making your neck right now, you can cross it over on the other side and flip it back and then double knot. So again, you go one third up one third from the end of your corn husk, right? One third and you cross it over, pull it taut, and then you flip it over kind of with the strings, cross it over, pull it taut, and then one more time, cross it over and pull it taut and double knot it. Leo, we have some questions if that's Absolutely. okay. Absolutely, yes. Um, so, uh, Cheryl, um, I'm going to mispronounce this. Uh, Savage, you, you had your hand raised. Um, I'm going to have you unmute if you ha still have a question. Go ahead, Cheryl. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, I was just wondering before you, uh, when you first wrap the three on the top and the bottom, are you wrapping those kind of around the sides or just letting them be flat? Oh, I wrapped them around the sides. Okay. Yeah because it's just going to help see how it smooths it out. These are the ones on the sides here mm -hmm. and here. So the ones under it are also kind of wrapped around. Yes. 
So okay. if I turn this, it's all just kind of wrapped around neat little package. So okay. here are the ones on the sides. It's fairly smooth. Right, I see. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, uh, Barbara Sedinath, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hi, my question was whether the hair is included in the tie or is it above the hair? Not oh, great question. It is included in the tie. So it's a little bit hard to see here. Okay. Thank but you. it is included in the tie. Yes, because if we do not tie the hair in, it'll just fall out. Those are all the questions for now. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut my excess string here. And because I have sinew, artificial sinew. Now, if you have cotton string, please do not do this. But if you have dental floss or artificial sinew, something that has a plasticky nature in it, um, you're just going to take your lighter and you're going to carefully burn it down and tap on the end of it. This is just going to cause the wax to solidify and prevent your knots from coming undone. If you have cotton string, I wouldn't worry about it. This is only for the folks with some sinew. And you definitely wanna tap it out before it does burn your string. <laughs> I've done that a few times, not too fun, especially when you have a thousand beads on it, if you're making a necklace. So now that you have secured your um, first bundle of corn husk, you start peeling it like a banana very carefully. And it's okay if these corn husks that you first start with begin to crack a little bit or if they split. This is the inner part of the head. And I just turn and I find the leaves that are kind of layered. So I pulled that one down. So the next one to come down is this one here. So I already have a split, so I'm just going to follow that split, which is fine. And I'm using, on the bigger leaves, I'm just using two hands to fold it back. And I'm straightening out the corn husks so they lay flat like that. Not too many wrinkles. And you're just going to go all the way around. You get a feel for it. In some areas it's a little thicker than others, but that's okay. And just peel it like a banana. Just like that. And it's okay if it's not perfect. Obviously the side is not perfect here, but that could end up being the back, which would be covered by hair anyway. I'm just moving it all the way around. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that that other side there will be the back because I can see that in this corn husk, I have no marks or wrinkles. Whereas the side, it's a few more pieces. And that's okay. And you just try to fold them in. And you do the best you can. And follow the natural line of where the hair comes in. Now it's kind of cousin it ish. Just a little blob there. So, what I ended up thinking would be the front has actually become the back for me. And I say that because in my case here, 
this really nice corn husk ends up folding over this other corn husk. Right, so that becomes the back. And this corn husk here becomes the front. And so this is the trick. I think that this is kind of the trickiest part of the whole thing. But this is where we're going to create our neck. So it should look like this. It should look like a tamale, a very stuffed tamale. So I'll wait for everyone to catch up. While I wait for everyone to catch up, I'm just going to cut another length of the same size of sinew. You can choose to decorate your corn husk afterwards any way you'd like. You can add clothes to it, you can add beads, you can, um, some people paint them. Um, I choose to leave mine usually natural color, but if I am going to work with colored corn husk, I make sure that my colors are already set in the corn husk ahead of time so they don't bleed. So some people use a rip dye. Um, I like to use natural dyes here um, in New England. These things are falling. You might say, what is that? It looks like a lime. Um, but you cut it like you would an avocado and you go all the way around. And this is a black walnut hull. And inside lives a black walnut that we dry out and we store in a cloth bag. We keep ours next to the stove. My dad used to keep his next to the wood stove um, for a few weeks. And then you can crack these and eat them and they are delicious. But with these hulls, they start oxidizing right away. And they turn, like an avocado, they turn from bright green to um, almost black. And if you put them in a pot and you start um, simmering them, you're going to get this beautiful dye which looks like coffee. You can see an oil slick in there, um, but this is black walnut dye. Um, I did not unfortunately have the time to dye my corn husks, but it doesn't really make a black dye. Depending on how long you go, it can make a yellow dye, it can make a brown dye, um, just depending on how many holes you have and how long it, uh, you simmer it down. My hands up until today were covered in dye. I was a little bit nervous because they looked, uh, they had all different colors and stains from the various dye projects that I've been doing this fall. Are there any questions at this point? We'll take some questions before I move on to how to tie this. We have a question from uh, Steph. Steph, I'll have you unmute yourself. Hi there. Hello, go uh, ahead. Hi, uh, I had some black walnut uh, hulls that I, I found, I think a while ago. Would this be appropriate to dye it or do they need to be like sort of fresher or? I've only ever done it with fresh. Um, you could try it or maybe Google search um, if you can do anything with the old ones. I know what you're talking about. They're black and they're hardened. Yes, yes. Um, I'm not sure. I've never done okay. it. I've always used the fresh. And okay. for us here, now is a great time because they're, they're starting to fall. They're starting to fall. Okay. Um, and how many would you use about when you get them fresh to, to oh. dye them? Um, I mean, the, to make this batch of dye is probably only like 12. I grabbed well, them off my neighbor's tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so right, it's not a lot. Much. Okay. Any other questions? That looks like all the questions for now. Great. Thank you, Leah. So we're going to take our sinew that we've cut, right? This arm, little beyond arm length here. And we're just going to put it on our table. And we're going to go again, we're going to go somewhere between one third and one half of the way down of all of our corn husks, even these ones down here. 
And just like what we did before, we're going to cross it over and pull it tight, really, really, really tight. And this is what's going to make our head. And this is the most challenging part. You might end up with a fat head if you had thicker corn husks or if you have a lot of hair. So I am going to go around again. And it's, it's like tying a gift, right? So you want to try to keep your finger on it. And you just pull it really tight. I'm going to go around one more time because this is the face side for me. And so I like to have all my knots in the back. And you just pull it as tight as you can. It might be a little bit boxy or blocky, but you know, it's your first corn hostel. And so um, that's to be expected. Maybe next time you can experiment with a little bit less hair or a little bit less corn husk or you can try thinner corn husks and I'm just going to double knot it again maybe even triple knot it and you cut off the excess and again if it, you're using the sinew just lock it in with your lighter tap on it Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer too so everyone can see how I'm doing this with the sinew. Right. Just like that. So this head's a little bit big, but you know what? We'll just end up making a slightly bigger doll. Are there any questions? I'm just starting to get my next grouping of corn husks ready. I don't see any questions right now, Leah. Great, so for this grouping of corn husks, we're gonna try to find ones that are the same, roughly the same size. These ones are stuck together. Same size and same thickness. So these ones came together. And I'm going to lay them, I'm going to move my doll out of the way. And I'm going to lay them here, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is carefully, I will start in the middle and I'm going to carefully, you can roll them or you can kind of fold them like so, as tight as you can. And this is what is going to make the arms. Oh, a nice roll. And again, I'm going to take some sinew, not very long, probably about eight inches, 10 inches. And I'm going to start wrapping it. So putting it halfway 
and I'm going to wrap it around the center. So I'll take one side, I'll go one way, around twice, and then just tie it off, make a knot. Just like that. Nice little package. Nice little, it looks like a scroll. And as always, I'm going to trim my excess and burn it. Leah, we do have a question. Go for it. Um, so Andrea, I'm going to have you unmute. Go ahead. Hello, Leah? Yes. Hi, Leah. Um, I was busy getting the corn husk off the water and I didn't even see what you just did. Like, <laughs> Sure, no, not a problem. Um, right. I can just do it. No, it's totally fine. So you wanna find two corn husks that are roughly the same size. Okay. You don't want them super, super wide. You don't want them thin either. Nice medium length. Um, but you do want them the same size. If you can't find them that are, if you can't find two that are exactly the same size, that's fine. You can just take a larger one and rip it down to size. Um, okay. These ones are roughly the same size, but for the, for the example, what I'm just doing is I'm starting in the middle and I'm pinching. Okay and I'm just rolling it. I mean, you can fold it, but you want to make it as tight as possible. Okay. And you're going to go all the way to the end. And then you're going to take some sinew and tie it around the middle. Okay. And when you tie it, just try to wrap it around I try to wrap it around twice, right? So if you look at me here, I have a little extra and I just wrap it around twice and then double knot it. Okay, thank you. Not a problem, you're welcome. And uh, we also have a question from Tina. So Tina, I'm gonna have you on mute. Hi, Tina. Hi, um, my corn husks are very more triangular than rectangular like yours. Is it gonna make a difference if I cut a little bit of that top part off? So I would not, so this one's roughly triangular. I wouldn't cut it. What I would do is I would find another one that is just as long. And what you're going to try to do is layer them so it makes, a rectangle. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. So kind of come in a little bit. But not too much because if you go too much, then you're gonna have teeny tiny little arms. Um so you want you want to do the best that you can to try to make the rectangle out of the two. I mean corn husks come in all textures. Um See, this one is super wide and thick, nice and wavy. I have one of those critters that I was talking about. So Leah, we have another question. Yes. Um, so uh, username Ada, uh, please unmute yourself. Go ahead. Um. I will, I will unmute you, Ada. Okay, hi. Hello. Uh, so it's Ada, Ada, but- My apologies. Um, that's okay, I get it. Um, when you started rolling, you said start rolling in the center and I just couldn't see you do that because I was looking at mine. I started at the end. Is this going to be okay? 
I think it'll be okay. I mean, I say the center because I think it's a little bit easier to to Can match you your corn together. Absolutely. So I just have two corn husks here. Don't worry about the size, but okay. I've just layered them just like this. Yep. And I'm starting here. Oh, that's what you mean by the center. Yes. Got it. Okay, yeah. thank you. And, and so as I kind of roll, I just make sure that they're even on both ends. Thank you, you want to have a nice even roll. I think those are all the questions for now, Leah. Okay, great. Um, we're going to just take a couple of pieces of sinew around the same size. Let's go with, um, I don't know, eight-ish inches. I go maybe a little bit beyond my uh, the spread here. So what's this? This is probably like nine inches. So I have a couple already set. Sometimes it's easier to have them set ahead of time. And what I'm going to do is we are going to make the hands of the doll. So I'll show you, this is what they look like. They're just folded over. So we take your corn husks and you want to lay your sinew down underneath. Just makes it a little bit easier. And you're going to take your corn husks and just fold it. Um, you might want to go, what's that? I seem to like to work in thirds. So I went one third of the way down here. So you can see, I just folded the end. I'll do it from this angle. Just folding the end like that. It's okay if there's a little bit out, you might want to try to tuck it in. And it's just a little fold. And you're going to wrap your sinew around two or three times and tie it off. And I'm going to do it on the other side so you can see me do it again. You can see it on that side. And we're going to do it on this side as well. So you take it and you're going to fold it the same way on the opposite side. So fold it the same way like this. Right? So the, the edge of the corn husk is on the same side of the roll. We're just going to tie it, wrap it around a couple of times and tie it. And as always, put off the excess and burn it if you're using your sinew. So it looks like this. And if I flip it over, it's nice and smooth on that side. the other side. It's a little bit long here. So just like this. Any questions? I don't see any questions coming in right now. Excellent. Okay. 
So what we're going to do is we're going back to our body, right? And you're looking at the face of my doll. You're just going to turn it 90 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a split here, right? So it goes up. We're splitting our corn husks in half. Right, just like that, splitting our corn husks in half. So it's smooth on the face side, but from the side profile, it's just right in half. And this is where we're going to wedge our arms. So Leah, we have a question. Go for it. Okay, uh, so Laura Backman, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Laura. Hi, I'm just finishing the second hand. Could you slow down a lot and maybe redo that whole part after the second hand? I, I haven't even finished tying the second knot for the second hand. Absolutely, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, Thank not you. a problem. So what I did was I took our corn husk body, right? And so the side is my face. I just turned it 90 degrees and I started splitting up right up the middle. So it looks like this. Just split the corn husks if they rip, you know, just follow the, the natural the natural patterning. And this is where we're going to put the arms. And I just slid the arms right up there. Like so. And we'll be making, just we'll be securing, um, securing the arms with a tie right underneath them. So you want to take a longer length arm sew, forearm, and you'll secure right underneath. Just like you did with the neck, same kind of tie. So I'm going to just be doing that, showing you. It's the same, same exact tie. Going as, as tight as you can, because if you, if you leave it loose, what'll happen is it'll start to slide down. You, you need that bulge a bit, kind of that hip area. Oops, sometimes that happens. And I try to wedge it up right underneath the arms. So I try to get the arms as high as I can. And then I try to wedge that tie up that's securing sinew as tight under the arms as I can. Pulling it tight or wrapping it a couple of times. even three or four times. I think I'm going to end up doing four. And again, I try to have all my knots in the back.
nice and tight. And again, we are just turning our sinew here. So you can see all my knots are in the back of my doll. And if they're not in yours, sometimes you can just adjust them a little bit just by sliding it over. It's a little tricky. So, uh, on the front. sorry to interrupt, Leah. We have another question. Absolutely. So, uh, Laura Backman, I'm going to ask you to unmute. I'm all set now. Thank you. All right. Excellent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add shoulders to my doll. And I'm going to find a wider, somewhat thicker corn husk. Like this. Not, that's too wide. That's too great. Um, or let, let's even say a medium width, right? This is a nice medium width corn husk. And this one already has a split. I'm splitting it right down the middle. Right, took a medium width, split it down the middle. I'm going to take another forearm length of sinew and cut it. Now I'm just going to play around a little bit. I will take one side of the corn husk and put it under with the thinner side in the back and the thicker side in the front. And I'm just going to put it over the side like a sash, right? So about halfway. So if you look here, it's going to just fold over the side like a sash. And I'm just carefully folding it around the doll. So it's as tight around the body as possible. And then I'm going to take the other smaller corn husk and I'm going to go the opposite way around the opposite shoulder area. And you just want to play around with it so they look even. You can see here, they're not very even. So maybe I need to pull it down a little bit so the thicker part of the corn husk is in the shoulder area. Or maybe I just pulled them both a little bit taut, more taut. Or maybe I don't like how it's coming out at all. So I'm going to thin out my corn husk even more. And it all is just playing with the material, getting a feel for it. So I like that. So it's like an X in the front. I flip it over. It's also an X in the back. Some people go double layer, but we're just going to go single layer. And you're going to secure it where these two points on the X meet. This makes the waist. Right, so where you would feel kind of a natural waist would fall, maybe a little bit above where you would imagine the navel of your corn husk figure to be. And as always, we're just going to wrap it around a few times. And 
And again, knots go in the back. I see that Felicia has a question. Yes, I was waiting for a good oh. stopping moment, but yeah. yes. That was a great so, question. How do you keep, whatever you're doing this, how do you keep it from going Like, how do you keep the little arm from folding down? Well, if you think about it, we never stand with our arms wide out. I don't know right. about you, but I do that every day. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a good stretch. If you want your, your arms to be out, um, it's just a matter of positioning. When So when I make my dolls, what I like to do is I like to naturally have their arms down. Sometimes I'll have their arms bent, but um, if you're interested in doing it this way, at the very end, we're going to tie a tie around so the arms stay down. Um, does that answer your question adequately? It does. So okay. it doesn't matter. And then just play with the, the width. Got yeah. it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. You can kind of shift them up a little bit. Are there any other questions at this point? I don't see any other questions right now. Great. So now we're coming to the last part. This is where we take, again, our widest, nicest corn husks. And we're going to, like we did at the very beginning, we're going to put them up over the face of the doll or figure. This one's a little bit too wide for me. I'm going to adjust it like so. We're going to put um, two in the front and two in the back. And like where we began, two on the sides. If you are making a doll with a skirt and you want it to be fuller, you can do three. This has three. This one, this one has one in the back. And two in the front. If you want to make legs, I suggest an even amount, so either one in the back and one in the front, or two in the back and two in the front. Um, so I have one in the back and one in the front, and maybe we'll start this way by doing one in the back and one in the front, because if we want to make legs, this will be kind of a, an easier way. And you can also make a doll that has legs and a skirt too. And this is going to pretty much be the same step. Anytime we add, if we wanted to make it a more full skirt or dress, um, you're going to just take your nice corn husks and lay it down like you did at the very beginning. And all we're doing is we're just tying it right at that waist point. You need to find that waist point. and you want to tie it tight. So just like this, little corn husk sandwich here. And so I see my waist point is here on the side. So I'm going to go pretty much right under my arms. And what I'm also going to be careful of doing is this side, I know that this is a side with the face. So when you have it on the side with the face, make sure that you start your tie um, or you have the smoothest part of your tie where the face is <laughs> because then they start 
bunching and you want them to bunch towards the back instead of forwards. So my face is right under here and I'm just pulling this towards the back here. So you see the corn husks are kind of coming in at angles and you're going around again. And it doesn't matter if at this point your knots are in the front or in the back because you're going to flip your corn husk forward and it's going to be underneath these leaves. So I just tied it right in that area. Leah, is this a good moment for a question? Absolutely. All right, so uh, Tess Lukey, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Hey, Tess. Hi, Leah, how are you? Good, how are you? Feels weird uh, <laughs> seeing you do this but uh, over Zoom, but um, I was wondering the corn husks, did, when you put them for the skirt, do they match up where the corn husks end underneath, like the body? Do you wanna they match do. up the end with that? So they match up uh, slightly longer okay. than where the body is, okay. just a little bit. Thank you. Not a problem. So what I'm doing now is I'm just folding them down. And you have a lovely little figure here. So I went with one and one. So sometimes corn husks are thicker and sometimes they are thinner. Um, and so for me, I like it when my dolls can stand straight up. Um, so for me, I know that this isn't going to work because this is too thin. So what you can do is if it's too thin for you, you just repeat the same step, right? So what you'll do is you'll flip up the corn husks again and you will just add more in the same exact fashion. Does that make sense? I see that we have a question from Ada. Ada, I'll have you unmute yourself. Um, are we going to be able to like rewatch this? Is that available at the end? Yes, absolutely. Um, it will not be available this evening um, because we have to go through the recording um, mm -hmm. and do final edits, but we will be emailing you the rest of these instructions. If you are okay. worried that you will not complete your doll this evening, if you have to go or you just have other things coming up, um, what you can do is I would suggest keeping your doll out of the water. And then when it's time to return to completing your doll, your figure, you just soak it back in that warm water. Um, it's not going to hurt the, the yarn. It's not going to hurt any of the work that you've done. Um, and so when it's, when you can watch that video again, or if you want to make another doll, um, it will be available. Thank you. You're welcome. We have another question from Michael Nephew. I'll ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Michael. So uh, it came apart. Oh, all right. Let me let me find you. Um, is your video turned on? Yes, there you are. Okay. Let me see. Hang on one second. Okay. So it came apart. Not a problem. So um, can you just move your hands? Um, nope, your other hands. Um, hold the doll by the head. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. What you're just going to do is you're going to repeat the same step, but you need to tie it tighter, tighter, tighter. Um, as tight as you can go. And you want to try to get it up. Um, remember I said you, you need to make the hips right a little bit um so you want that tie to be right up 
where right before where it starts to bulge right in here because that's what's going to keep it on um so can you hold it uh just to your the other way um okay there you go and turn it a little bit okay so where that sinew tie is um you can eat yes so try when you put these new corn husks on try to get your next sinew tie above that line okay if possible all right those are all the questions for now leah okay great just going back to my video here so i can see So we're going to just add, for, for mine, I'm going to add another layer. So the corn husks, a nice thicker layer. This might be a good time if you want, if you're doing a skirt, this might be a good time to do these ruffly ones because it leaves a nice texture to it, like a fabric. I'm choosing to go with the straight corn husks at this point because I'm going to show those of you who are interested in doing legs that step. Part of the corn husk process is finding the right thickness that you want. And then when you find the right thickness you want, they break. Sometimes it's easier to sort the corn husks before you put them in there. I will admit that I did not do that, um, but you can, because that way you'll get a good feel of what they're like when they're dry. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to add another layer here, right? So I'm flipping that, that apron back up and just doing one underneath, one on top, and I'm going to tie it in the same area with that arm length. So I'm looking for that tie that's there. I'm going to try and even go closer to the arms. This time. That might help some of you who are, who have your sinew that's slipping off. Just as close to the arms as possible. And this layer will be the, um, the layer underneath. So it's not going to be the layer that you see. So again, it's not going to matter too much what side you end up making all your ties on, on this layer. solidified here and again just folding it down there we go just like that so if you are happy with the thickness and if you feel like it's going to stand up well, 
once it's dry, because remember, they are much stiffer when they are dry. Um, what you can do is you can take some scissors and you can just trim it so it's nice and even to the point where you feel like it would stand up. So if you look at some of this complete doll, it's fairly even. This one, I would trim it even with the outer edge of the skirt here. But I'm going to take it a step further. So before I take it a step further, um, I'll let those of you know who are keeping it as a skirt, my suggestion would be to look at your hair and start snipping the loops because when you pull it, right, there are all these loops here. Pull it as taut as possible. So I like to individual, I don't like to just have at it. I like to individually pull them taut and snip those loops. And then you can do whatever hair style you want. You can do braids, you can do a singular braid, you can cut it short, you can leave it long. But this is your, your hairstyle that you can start working on for those of you who wish to keep it as a skirt. And if you want your skirt to be more full, you just go back and you do those same steps over and over where you flip everything up and you add more. If you want, you can add some to the sides just by flipping up um, all of the skirt and just um, adding some on the left and right side of the doll and tying it and flipping it back down. It, that's where you have a personal preference. My aunt used to make, um, she used to make these dolls and um, she used to put them on the top of the Christmas tree. And so she would make the, uh, she would make the, the skirts very, very full, um, very, very full so that they could withstand the top of the, the tree. So are there any questions before I move on to turning this skirted doll into a doll with legs? I see a question from Cheryl. Go ahead, Cheryl. My, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, when I was turning the skirt down, there are um, some folds that happen in it, and then um, <clears throat> I'm wondering how you avoid that or how you make those folds work on the right side. Okay. Would you mind showing me? Can you hold it up? See how these folds are in? Oh, yes. Okay. So is that because it's underneath? It's not as big of a deal because you're not seeing it, but if, if you don't like the way it's affecting the outer layers of your doll, um, I would suggest maybe just trying to fit your finger underneath and move the folds, or if that's not working, you may have to untie and retie. Um, okay. And that could be a case of your corn husk being too thick um, or too layered. Okay, yeah, they are kind of thick. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. What you can do is um, sometimes just because it's an under layer to the dress area, mm -hmm. um, you can just kind of split those corn husks underneath. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I am going to show those of you who wish to do legs how to do them. Um, so what you're going to do is I prefer using a scissor. You can rip them and split them, but at this point, I prefer to use a scissor. So try to find right where that split would be, right down the middle. And you're going to carefully take your scissor and you're going to cut through all your corn husks. 
and once your scissor kind of stops, that's where you're going to start using the, the ripping action. So going up. Um, you want to avoid as much as possible cutting that body material. Um, you can split it a little bit. It might be a little bit thicker, but try to avoid cutting that body material. So it should look like this. Straight in half. And while you folks are doing that, I'm going to take a few lengths, again, probably, I don't know, maybe a foot or so, 12 inches. I'm going to cut, at this point, six of them, three per leg. And this is where we're going to make essentially joints. That's a good way of putting it because you tie them at the areas where you would see joints, maybe with the exception of the upper thigh. <clears throat> All right. Does anybody have any questions on splitting before we move on? You may need to um, move some of the corn husk or split some of the corn husk over that's underneath just so it falls right. So I have a unique problem where I have a little bit too much excess of this body material, right? And it's all uneven underneath where we had that um, apron or skirt material. So what I'm going to do, because this is affecting my ability to, for my legs to look right, is I'm carefully just going to take a scissor and I'm going to cut some of that excess there. And just trimming it up so it's neat and in that area where it's kind of stiff. Makes it a little more even. And then I'm going to fold these parts down and see <clears throat> how it lays. Oh, much better. Right? Much, much better. So more even. If you go too high, you might run the risk of ruining your whole doll because that is the body of your doll. Your figure. I clean my work area a little bit here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my sinew and I'm going up and just under that body area and I am tying it around a few times. At this point I'm doing my knots in the back. So I'll do one thigh area and then I'll do the other thigh so you can see. And if you feel like your legs are too thin, feel free to untie it and add more corn husks as if you are making the skirt. Just, it's just repeating those steps. All right, and then I'm going to take the other side and do it.
right around the thigh. Just making some adjustments as I go. So I noticed that on my doll, I can see that that body meat, essentially, <laughs> that, that body area, um, which is not the effect that I want. So I may need to kind of go back and add more corn husks to make my legs a little bit thicker. Or I can put an apron or skirt over. I also sometimes dress my corn husk dolls. In this particular one is made with wool. So if we take a little peek here, oh, I made a very accurate uh, loincloth. It's kind of the, it's actually kind of the same in this particular figure. You, I probably didn't like the fact that I could see that body area. And so I quite literally covered it with a cloth. Do we have any questions so far on this part of the legs? We're just going to keep going down to where the knees would be and just adding those ties, doing the exact same thing. I might even take one of these and split it. So, um, so I just, I see that I cut this a little bit too long. I don't want to waste. So I'll just cut it in half. Because just as you go further down, they're going to become a little more, it's going to become a little thinner. Are you going to go where the knees are? And then finally, you will go where the ankles are. And the way you want to keep your corn husk in a more erect position, an upright position, is you will um, end up tying the legs straight so they're not splayed out. So just doing this tie here on the legs. And you want to let these corn husk figures dry. Some people say 24 hours. I prefer 48 hours um, before you start um, so I prefer to let them dry maybe 48 hours uh, before we're going to take the wrapping ties off. I just call them wrapping ties. What I'll do is I will take a larger piece of sinew and I position the arms where I want them to be. You can do it with your cotton string. And so I don't want the arms at a 90 degree angle. I want them a little in a little more relaxed and natural position. So I'm just going to position them where I want them and I'm doing a loose tie. Just like that. And within this, I'll adjust those arms. And you can do that for the skirt as well. If the skirt, if you if you have a skirt and it's too splayed out, um, you will just take that loose tie and go around. And we'll also be doing that for the legs because nobody wants to be at a wide, super wide stance. Okay. 
basically our corn husk figure is complete. Um, there are some tips and tricks that I have for styling the hair, for example. Um, I'm going to just finish this little leg here and I'll get right into styling the hair quickly because that's a personal preference as to how people like to do that. All right. So I feel like when you make a corn husk doll, you might start with an idea of what you want to make and then it ends up being something else. I started this idea where I thought that this was going to be a young lady and then I finished and it's actually, I would say it's a teenager. <laughs> I say that because kind of lanky, right? A little bit lanky and needs some adjusting, <laughs> but it'll get there. And so here is your corn husk figure. If you make wider shoulders, um, it can be more of what's thought of as a male figure. That. So why I say this is a teenager because the shoulders aren't too wide just yet. It reminds me of my nephew, honestly. <laughs> and they all have little personalities that go with them. So you just make adjustments. Um, when I go to braid the hair, I make sure all my ends are snipped. When I go to braid the hair, I take care as if I'm braiding my son's hair or my husband's hair. Um, and what I'll do is I will evenly spread it around. because you don't, I mean, this is a teenage boy. I don't know if he's ready for a receding hairline like grandpa is here, but um, I try to spread it around like so. And then I will take a piece of sinew, which I, oh, I dropped the sinew, and I will wrap it around the neckline. And what this does is it secures it to the back of the neck so this doesn't happen. It doesn't just flop around. If that doesn't bother you, that's fine. But um, I just secure it to the back of the neck like that. You can see that I did it here. If you look closely. And you can kind of hide it um, once you start braiding the hair a little bit. I didn't finish trimming this one but it keeps it nice and even so you don't get those, those patches poking through of corn husk. But there are many different hairstyles that you can add to your figure. And it's a great gift. Um, I mean, this is definitely a, a more advanced one. There are simpler ones that you can do, which is basically those first steps without the hair and um, we don't, we won't add necessarily shoulders or we won't add extra skirt material, but um, you know, they'll just be kind of simple, simple arms and simple legs. And so I've just tied that back there and I'm going to continue now going around and pulling all those pieces of hair where I want them and pulling them taut. Just as I arrange my own hair when I braid it or my son's hair. And this, this takes a little while, but you get it to the point where, where you like it. And it's something to be proud of and show your family and show this new skill that you've passed on to your family or community, friends. So Leah, we have a question. Go ahead, Tina. 
my daughter is wondering how would you make a shirt for the doll? Oh, good question. Um, so I made this shirt. This this is like years ago. So this is a little, probably this doll is old. It's about ten years or so. So it's a little bit hard to see. But essentially what I did here, um, I haven't made one with a shirt since, I think because I like these more natural ones. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to cut um, like you would a tea dress. Um, so, all right, let me think about this for a quick second. Let's see if I have, give me one second and I'll draw it on a piece of paper. Okay, so you're going to, just like with the shirt, make a pattern. Like this, and just like when you make your own clothes, obviously you might want to make it a little, little neater. This is just a quick sketch. So even in the front, in the back, and you just want, um, a hole for the doll's head. You can make it with a little slit in the back too that you can maybe make like a little leather lace or sinew lace. And what you'll, so when you cut it, it looks like this. And then what you'll do is you'll just stitch up. So when you fold it back, right, you'll stitch up the sides. Does that make sense? I would suggest for dolls, maybe using something like wool or something that's not going to fray easily. Um, felt also works. It has a wool effect, but um, you know, it's nice and rugged if you want your kids to play with it. Um, and then like for a loincloth, for example, it's just how you would make a normal uh, human sized loincloth, just teeny tiny where, where's my sketch? My son's uh, scribbles are in here. Um, with a loincloth, if you wanted to make it, you just kind of arch it a little bit. I'm not the best drawing artist, I will be honest with you, but you would make something like that. So this would be a shirt. And this would be a loincloth. Does that answer your question, Tina? Yes, it did. Um, I don't know no. that she'd be able to sew it herself, but we could give it a try. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're working with a little one, I would suggest um, some felt and some glue, um, fabric glue, tacky glue, just going up the sides with it. Um, you know, I... I sew, I bead, um, so I take a, I, I take some care in doing it. But I also make dolls for, for my four-year-olds, and um, I know that they're going to get a lot of love and good use. Um, I make them for educational collections and displays where I know kids are going to love them as well. And so um, changing the clothing out with felt is, is easy. Um, it's not my favorite to use glue, uh, but I totally understand. Um, and if it's something you want your, if you have like a seven year old or six year old, that might be something for them to, to follow along with. I think those are all the questions for now. Okay, great. So that is, that is it. You have successfully created your corn husk figure. Um, we will be posting this recording or we will be emailing this. This will go to the Brown University YouTube page, but we will be recording this. If your corn husks are uneven, please take a scissor and trim them. Um, and do any kind of extra trimmings that you want to do. I apologize that we went a little bit over time. I hope that isn't impacting anybody's evening too significantly, but I wanted to make sure that everybody was 
all together and moving on um, to the same spot. So please, if you have any further questions, um, reach back up out to us at the email that you received the Zoom link from, and we will do our best to answer them um, right away. If you have any questions about construction on your doll or anything else, that's totally fine. So I just want to say, Katapatanamu, thank you all. Um, I'm going to just, so you can see my face. Um, Leah, if you could just adjust that for everyone, that would be great. I just wanna say thank you all. This has been a great uh, evening of creating art. We are going into winter time, definitely very chilly at my house this morning. And so it's a great time to start picking up your art projects again. Um, it's a nice quiet time and uh, you know it's a good way to spend with your family on a Friday night or Saturday night um, doing something different. You are probably with your family every single day and it's probably a little bit difficult to be with other folks. Um, but this is something new that you can that you can do together. You can do via Zoom with uh, family and friends and community all around. I see Love has uh, raised her hands. Go ahead, Love. Love, I think you can unmute yourself. There you go. There you go. Thank you so much, Leah. I uh, appreciate the class. It's been very informative. Um, I do know that some of the Northwest tribes, or maybe even more tribes, have their own corn husk doll. Um, uh, the ones in the Northwest have like leather and things like that on it. Mm -hmm. um, is there a story that goes with the corn husk dolls for individual tribal communities or Eastern woodland communities? I just don't know if there is one. Sure. So the story that was related to me um, came from a Shkatakuk woman um, and an elder of mine, Trudy Lamb Richmond. Um, and I believe the, uh, the origin is a Haudenosaunee story of the no face doll. Um, and that was what was related to me when I was making my first doll. And that's kind of the story that um, we stick with. I am not a storyteller by any means. <laughs> I like to educate, but I am not a great uh, storyteller. Also, um, I, in, in my own traditions, I don't relate stories outside of frost time, um, but I do know the gist is that they do not um, have faces. And this is, um, there, there's a very specific story that goes along with that. Um, and it has to do with a young girl um, who ultimately did not help her community out. Um, she was kind of vain and uh, so the creator had a messenger take her face. Please forgive me to any of my relatives for um, getting that getting that wrong. Um, but again, I'm not a storyteller and I um, also don't feel comfortable relating the whole story out of season. And so if somebody has uh, something they'd like to add uh, from, from a Haudenosaunee community or another community um, that they feel comfortable with sharing, um, you know, go ahead. I do know that um, children and, you know, young adults definitely around this area would have um, would have stories, but also have this form of a doll, um, along with leather dolls too. There are beautiful leather dolls, but um, that that are made by local artists. But um, in making corn husk dolls, I know that one of the teachings that goes with it is you are teaching 
youngsters patience. You're teaching them how to do things and in, in teaching them how to make their doll. You're teaching them how to braid hair. You're teaching them how to make clothing on a miniature scale, how to make moccasins, how to make um, maybe a woven sash. So these are all very small accomplishable projects for smallish hands. Um, I wouldn't necessarily ask my four-year-old to do it, but uh, definitely um, as, as kids are, are getting older, turning into adolescents, then um, these are kind of the responsibilities they start wanting to take on. And I believe to some degree that that's still occurring in our communities today. You know, young people are looking for ways in which they can learn traditional skills and, and get that traditional knowledge. And so I think dolls are a good way of starting that um, for, for some kids. So um, Leah, we had a message from Tina who okay. shared with us that uh, yes, she is Mohawk from uh, Tayan uh, Denaga, Ontario, and they have the story of the No Face doll and would be willing to share that story with those who would be interested. Um, so sure. Tina, I, if you want to raise your hand, I could um, unmute you if, if you're comfortable sharing now. Um, or if you want to let us know how people can reach out, oh, I hear it, see it right here. You should be able to unmute. Um, for the sake of, of, of not taking up a lot of time, um, I can forward you my work email um, after this. And because I actually work for Jijunha um, and Gowana, we are the language and cultural center in Gundege, which is Tyantanaga, Ontario. And um, I can share with anybody after the fact of the story. We have, I think there are print versions, so I, could, I can probably find some online as well for, for you. But um, um, basically it comes from a vanity point and the young woman, um, her when she spoke to the to the moon and the moon took her her face because uh, she was being vain so it's um so not only is it teaching patience and and all of those virtues it's also um to not so basically saying not you know don't put yourself in that point that you're thinking highly of yourself more of yourself than of others that everyone should be equal um along those lines but anyway that's all i wanted to say <laughs> Thank you so much, Tina. That was just what I was hoping for. So huge katapatash for that. Huge thank you. Um, yeah, we would love to to reach out to you and, and also stay connected too. And then um, I think that there was another hand raise that I saw earlier. Um, if you had raised your hand, I think it was... Uh, maybe Michael Nephew, though maybe they've left the, the program. I would love for anyone who's still with us via video, show me your dolls. I'm so excited to see them. Hold them up. This is very exciting. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at them. That makes me so happy. Great job, everyone. Oh, yay, we have more people joining in with their video. Oh, you got two in there. Beautiful. I love the different colored hair, too. Especially, it, it's so great, especially because now everybody's dyeing their hair different cool colors. Oh, lovely, lovely. I'm so happy to see this. I'm so happy that everyone was able to join and they were able to walk away with a doll. Um, it's so great, or a figure. Um, and definitely keep going. You know, I learned a long time ago that if you learn a skill and you don't do it at least once a year, you will forget. And so um, that, that was taught to me by a basket artist. And um, I will be honest, I did not do that basket every day and now I have, or every year and I have forgotten. So um, definitely try to keep up on it. Thank, thank you all. I'm getting like a bunch of thank you email or um, messages. Um, so huge katapatanu. Thank you to everyone who has attended. And you'll be hearing from us with the Zoom link and more information um, 
about the dolls and further further info. Oh, I like your green corn one, Karen. I can see it. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, these are lovely. So we did go way over time, but it, I think it was definitely time well spent. So thank you for everyone who stuck around and those who couldn't stick around, we totally understand, but thank you for sticking around as long as you could. <laughs>